Understanding the sentiment and meaning behind language requires an architecture that can handle a lot of data. Join us as we talk to Mido AI about how they handle their data processing on this episode of Stack Chat. Thank you so much for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit more about Mido AI and what you do? Yeah, so we help large corporations increase sales by finding insights and sales triggers about their existing customers and potential prospects. And we do this by analyzing large amounts of unstructured data on the internet. So what's the technology behind how you make your AI? We need to uh, do a lot of things with all of this information. The first thing is, you know, um, detecting or separating Apple from Apple. People think that's trivial, but it's actually quite hard. And we do it in a language agnostic manner, which means that through our data processing pipeline, we can process any language. And being able to do this for all, uh, all very difficult cases, not just Apple and Apple, but similar ones in Norwegian and Swedish and German. And that's also what makes our technology unique, this combination of having a language agnostic knowledge graph and on top of that one, building a lot of machine learning modules uh, to solve all these really hard questions. And uh, we are using Apache Spark as our main data processing platform, which Patrick can talk more in detail about. So once the Spark streaming application has pulled all of its content from PubSub, it processes it through our, our NLP pipeline. Uh, this is where we do the entity extraction, we cluster the content, and we interact with all of these machine learning models that we have trained. These models, they are trained in uh, Apache Spark as well in a batch processing unit, which runs on ephemeral clusters with uh, preemptive nodes, which is awesome because then we can just spin up a thousand nodes and we can train really expensive model for a short time and not have to leave them, leave them running. And uh, once we have done that, the last step in the stream processing pipeline is to index the data back into the knowledge graph. And for that, we're using Elasticsearch, which is also a really awesome piece of software. It's got really great searching capabilities, so you can search for apples and get hits for apple uh, and that sort of thing. And um, once the data is indexed into Elasticsearch, it is made searchable from our APIs, which run in GraphQL. These APIs run in a microservice architecture in Kubernetes. So that is kind of the ecosystem that interacts with all of the data that is processed in Apache Spark. We make this uh, API accessible to our customers because that's how they integrate mostly with our service, taking data from us and into their internal CRM and prospecting systems. And we've even open sourced a programming language in order to customize APIs in GraphQL very easily. So people should check that out if they want to do that. So obviously over the last couple of years, you've learned a ton about your architecture. If you could go back and start again, what would you take with you that you felt was the most important thing? One takeaway here is that we are using Apache Spark quite heavily, and that means that we have to configure Apache Spark clusters. And if I would have gotten a dollar for every hour, every hour I spent configuring Spark clusters, I would be a rich man. Configuring Spark cluster is not, not, not something that should be underestimated. You need to configure the topology, you need to configure how many nodes you should have and all that all that sort of things. What you do get from Spark though is all of these machine learning libraries and a lot of utilities in this ecosystem. But we could have utilized those either way by using other, other kinds of systems, either in Python or, or likewise. So one obvious thing that we perhaps should have considered more is utilizing managed services like Dataflow, where you can use this managed service that can do all of the transformations and then you can use external APIs to do the machine learning stuff. And then you would also decouple the system and have the data processing one in one place and the machine learning con contained in other services. So when we started off, we had a single messaging queue where we published all of the content. This meant that if either that queue went down or some other service interacting with a queue went down, we were clogging the queue, we would have a backlog of a lot of things that would have to be processed. And that wasn't sustainable, at least not when the customers, they required that the delay through our system is as low as possible. So as a solution to that, we swapped uh, over to PubSub and created this priority concept where you, using machine learning, can determine w which priority queue should this content be put on. And that is, uh, that is based on feedback from our customers, either directly through our API, where the customers can choose what is relevant and what is not relevant. 
And based on this, we can infer what content matters the most to our customers. And based on that, we can utilize this to route the content through the right queues, such that, for instance, a stock market update is uh, put on the high priority queue because we know that our customers would want that as soon as possible. Thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> thanks for having yeah, us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Get started with Dataflow using these templates and tutorials. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe for more great Google Cloud Platform content. We'll see you next time on Stack Chat.